Welcome back to the Rinse and Size Studios. I am your host, Jyoti, and then once again, we have an amazing conversation today about another very, very, very important part of the journey of the UK underground scene. And today we're discussing all things that have anything to do with jungle. And I am joined by three pioneers and such important members of this scene of this movement of this sound and i'm gonna actually i'm gonna let you guys introduce yourself and we'll go clockwise Eastman, tell us for the people who don't know who Eastman is and what he does how you doing who are um, you and what do you do um Eastman, um been with this scene from the very beginning um pirate radio was my thing um events Back in the day before the pirate radio, I was a sound system man. Well, also you know, when you say pirate radio, I mean you are the the founder. I mean you can you can let us know what you've actually contributed to the scene. Cool FM. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> Very cool important, FM. not just a um, small name. I worked on other stations and that before that, uh, just playing music like as as a DJ, a reggae DJ, on other pirates. That's how I got introduced to the pirate scene. Right. But um, yeah, the. Uh, it came about back in early 91, um, the concept of Call. I was approached by someone um, to do a station and we did it. It's just an intro I'm doing now. <laughs> so ended up doing Call and from there, that was it. That was um, my life changed. I like that. My life changed completely. For the better. I hope. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to get it's quite... Been a, listen, it's been a, a road, and it's been a good road, a yeah. hard road. It, you know, we've had to fight for everything we've got and keep up standards. And it's like, it's, it, it's lovely. It's a lovely game, but sometimes it's hard. So it's the same in life with everything, you know? Absolutely. And I but, feel like in today's conversation, we're definitely going to touch on the highlights and also, the, you know, the rougher parts and part times when things weren't going exactly how everyone wanted yeah. them to go yeah. and then to your left we have um, well my, rinse, <laughs> my, my rinse uh, i was gonna say rinse uncle um my rinse family say member that if you want. Don't, don't gonna say uncle <laughs> <laughs> uncle dogs talk to us oh, for yeah. people who've been living under a rock who are you and what do you do uh i am uncle dogs uh as you say i'm a dj i'm rinse also a promoter and author bit of a jack of all trades master of none uh yeah my, I, I grew up trying to be on east man station and be like kenny ken and now i'm sitting in a room of them so it's, it's amazing you know, these, are, these are like heroes of mine <laughs> so yeah uh, i'll do a show on rinse fm still nowadays that highlights the golden era kind of 88 to 98 of rave music mm -hmm. mostly focused on jungle which is my main love and passion musically and uh, yeah, here we are talking about it. I can't, just being with these two and doing these kind of things is everything, honestly. When I was a kid, I was like I say, I was 16. I went and see Kenny play at Labyrinth and I was 16 when he turned the radio station oh on and gosh. I tried for years to get on to call and uh, I eventually got there. And then he kicked me off. No, he didn't really. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no, he didn't. No, I eventually got there and it changed my life. When I got yeah. on there, that was the platform that made me do what I'm doing now so there you are now yeah thank you for that and then to my right Kenny Ken right my name's DJ Kenny Ken I've been DJing since the beginning of the um of the beginning of time it sounded like that's what you meant <laughs> like the sentence ended there yeah, yeah the begin. I mean the beginning of this this electronic music scene that started in the UK about 88 89 Love that. and um before that I was a uh, uh working on London Transport as a railman and then before that I was being a bit naughty and not doing things the right way yeah that got you not but not at the Jackson 5 concert did it yeah yep. <laughs> Mr. Jackson 5 concert because of that <laughs> but um yeah and uh music saved me basically the 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 music scene which was just flourishing because before before um Acid House you had people mm -hmm. like Greg Edwards and mm -hmm. them kind of DJs Foggy and all them mm -hmm. them kind of DJs were doing it back then and them times I wasn't even thinking about being a DJ. I was just going out raving like to these parties. And then when the acid house thing started, I was a bit off key with it because it's the word acid put me off of it. Okay, yeah, okay. People were saying they was doing all these drugs and I, I said, boy, acid, uh -uh, I'm not in that. And then one week we just decided to check it out and see, and then from the first time I went to an acid house party, I was hooked. That's like, amazing. Yeah, hooked, hooked, line and sinker, <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Thank you for that. That's amazing. <coughs> Serious heavyweights in the room. Um, now, I will say Uncle Doug's has helped out a lot with uh, everything that I'm going to be asking about and, and we're going to be talking about. All the questions. She's shifting the blame there. Did you see that? No, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm giving credit where credit is due Wicked. is what I'm doing. Um, and also, I feel like, you know, in the past episodes, we've talked about different moments in UK underground music. So we had a conversation about when Garage went into grime, specifically that grey area. We've talked about uh, UK bass and what it, how it's developed over years and what it really means and whether it even has a definition. And then the last episode we did was about uh, drill, which is obviously very current and very now. Today, why I'm particularly very excited about it is because Jungle specifically is a scene that I may know the least about, um, especially growing up in Amsterdam and having moved here for the music. But it is also at the same time the scene that does the most to me um, when I'm out on the dance floor. Like I think there's something so tribal about it and connects to so many people who come from different musical backgrounds. My show on Rinse for the last six years is very soul focused. And there's never a show where a jungle track doesn't get slipped into because it slips, it fits so beautifully with everything else, whether it's vocals and samples and everything that the sound kind of encompasses. So I'm looking to learn from you guys today as well of why this sound and this music resonates so much with me. And how we'll start the conversation is with probably maybe the trickiest question of all, when and where did it all start? And what is your first memory of what we would now consider um, jungle music? Um, jungle, for me, first started, how it came about was that we used to play, we were still, in 91, we were still playing house and techno and U US garage. And, um, but then the scene kind of took a little split where, some guys were playing happy hardcore but the happy hardcore then wasn't like how happy hardcore is now it was different and i could play it okay okay because when you do i mean when you say happy hardcore i am thinking no it's not no sound. not like that no no okay. not like that it's a different kind of happy okay. hardcore it was more it was more dark okay it, it had that dark bit to it you know what i mean right. and then people started to certain producers started to fling the um the break beat into the fall to the floor mm -hmm. and then it was called jungle techno because it's right. like the doof, doof, but then you had the, doof, 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 the 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 breakbeat going underneath that as well. Yeah. And then eventually, someone took the fall to the floor away, and we was just left with the breakbeat, and that's jungle. That's how jungle was born. Speeded up hip hop breaks and hip hop breaks. You say? Yeah, not just hip hop breaks, right. but any breaks. You know, like the Amen break was yeah. the main was the main break back then. The Amen from the Amen Brothers. I think this kind of like ties in with what I was saying as well, that there's something about the sound that attracts so many people who are raised within different sounds of music, but you are always kind of, there's something, you know what it is with Jungle, yeah? There's something very gospel about it. Do you know what I mean? There's no. something spiritual. <laughs> Expand on that. Because <laughs> I feel like when you listen to, okay, so I I'm, think spiritual is a better word than gospel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spiritual, yeah, spiritual. but it is like, it is gospel for the dance floor. Yeah. If that makes sense. I hear that. So I discovered, so you're talking about 91, 92. I discovered Jungle. So I'm born and raised in Amsterdam and I loved this particular party called Oi, which is thrown by Gomez. I know Gomez. I yeah, played for Oi. Well, yeah, I played for them. So yeah, Gomez, yeah. Uh, Oi was kind of our first proper big party in Amsterdam that was really dedicated to the sounds of the UK and Gomez was kind of the pioneer of bringing those sounds over from London specifically to Amsterdam and I think I was 15 the first time I went to Oi so this was 2005 mm. that's when I got introduced to right, okay. and what I really liked about it it was just it just takes you to like another dimension and you can see people moving to a different part or rhythm or pace of the song that they enjoy the most yeah. So to some people, they're connected to the faster part. I mean, you know what? You said that was in 2005. It was yeah. the first real jungle thing. For me, for yeah, discovering for me. it. Because we, we Cool FM done Jungle in the Dam right. in 94. The first people yeah, to go yeah, abroad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. we was there. We a couple of clubs, a hotel. We had even run. A, yeah. Got a video somewhere, man. Oh, my gosh. Of, um, he was breakdancing. He done a quick <laughs> break dance because he used to be one. That's right. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. In the hotel, in that like, little dance, we had a warm up dance, and he'd just come in and done a little break dance thing. And that we had Trace, Brocky, Det, you know, lo lo lots of people. You've done Jungle in the Dam '94. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. See, so it was already there. It's while already I was been just there. 
yeah. sipping yeah. apple juice from my little sippy cup. Do you yeah. guys were already and when and when you got into it? Yeah. That wasn't the raw gutter jungle. I can imagine. It's <laughs> yeah, already yeah. been around. You got the polished so product in 2000. Yeah. 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 You didn't right. have the gunshot jungle of the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, saying that, Doug, tell me about when you remember or can, can remember a, a time, a moment, or a specific night even where you realised, hold on a minute, this is something different. Well, it's funny because I'm, like I said, I was a raver before I made it where these guys were the, the guys. And... Um, I remember, like, I, I understand it now, but I didn't at the time because I was 16. I was just this music, this new world of stuff. It was amazing. But mm. firstly, like Kenny says, I was into the happier sound. So even though you call it, you would call it happy hardcore, Kenny, it was, it was kind of breaks with some pianos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like what happy hardcore was going to end up being. Okay. But at the same yeah. time, you had a crossover of all the different sort of sounds that were to become different things. And... The reggae sound was introduced. I mean, 91's a fair call. There was probably tunes before that, the odd yeah, one, but yeah, through 91, yeah. you can really start to see the introduction of bass lines and reggae mm. vocals and stuff like that. Only in small snippets to start with. People like Noise Factory, I Potential you, I Bad Boy IB for them guys was, was doing it early doors. Sorry, Ken, go on. I'll tell you what tune what tune was one of the tune, tunes that was, um, you know, made that crossover was there was a tune called uh by masters at work yeah i little, remember just a dope just a little dope you speeded it up and we that had to one. speed it up yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Dugs, you know right yeah 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 and that tune there when you speed it it sounded rubbish when it was at normal speed okay <laughs> but when you speeded it up mm. it used to let off they used to tear down a dance you know it's what i mean the yeah, it used to tear down a dance and that tune yeah, for mate. me was one of the tunes that kind of like started to shape the way things were going to go. Definitely. You know so I mean? that was nine, in the 91, 92, that tune, Tasco Warehouse. When I was like, when Tasco was Warehouse. 90, I think it was about nine, maybe, maybe so, yeah, but I remember yeah. Tasco Warehouse, 92, and listening to Call, like Call switched on in November, 91, and through that next year, November to November, Jungle took over. Mm. Like it become a thing. It didn't even really have a name yet, but it become more yeah, reggae. There yeah, was more, yeah, yeah. Like I was a white kid from Dagnum that knew nothing about reggae mm. music, but this sound just got me, you yeah. know? And yeah. I don't think you can pinpoint a rave or a tune. People say Lenny D. Ice, we are, he was yeah, the first. Yeah, there yeah. ain't a tune or a rave or a moment. There's a, a collective of moments. Yes, yeah. That all just worked the mm. music was getting faster because yeah. these guys that were making the songs back then they were using primitive equipment and the sample rates were very you could only sample yeah. a tiny bit of a tune and you had to half speed you couldn't manipulate speeds of songs but as the equipment evolved people were making songs faster to fit with the reggae because the reggae was half speed so yeah. you had to double yeah. it up to make it to a 160 BPM you could take yeah. an 80 BPM and, and so the music got really quick through 91, 92, 93 it went from like 130, 40 BPM up to 160-ish yeah. mm over the course of a couple yeah, of years and, yeah. and that for me is where Jungle really by 93 it was its own thing its own entity it was a scene and yeah, it was once, a lifestyle I think, I think 160 BPM was the was the birth of proper Jungle definitely yeah, 160 yeah. BPM you know what I mean that was the, that with was me the, uh, the noticing of the Jungle and when it come about and all that um, my dad was partners with Sting on telepathy oh. the event called telepathy okay. that's right Yeah, yeah. my yeah. dad and Sting had telepathy Marshgate Lane the original rave yeah and um that was November 17th, 1990, I think that started, I'm not sure. And I was security there, I, I, like, I had my uh, team of security, we done security. So I was like a reggae man, brought into this by my dad, he said, look, get a team together, come and do the security. And I, Ken, I knew nothing about yeah. 88 Rave and all yeah, that. Yeah. Rocky and all that, man, Rocky used to go, yeah. he loved it. Yeah. And like, <laughs> you know, it's, it was like, Acid man, them, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, exactly, that's exactly devil music. <laughs> devil, yeah. this, this is a devil music. That was us. That's exactly how I was. Yeah. That was that's like exactly that was, was like me, Ragga Twins, and all that. Yeah, oh, Brocky, them, he sold that. He's gone. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Go around Brocky's ass. We was called <laughs> Stephen them days. Yeah, and on the wall we'd have his ticket ready for biology or something or whatever. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? yeah, on yeah. the wall ready. And um, hardcore. Brocky was hardcore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and Brocky used to me. play on my sound. He used to play a bit of rare groove in right. our Eastman sound. And yeah, so this thing started uh, um, Marshgate Lane telepathy, mm. and it went so, like a bang. It went proper. But yeah, from then, from 1990, working there, cause I used to come in, and it was a bit too much at the beginning. But over the next year, I could hear the things changing. Yeah. You know, that was from 1990 to 91. Because to me, Jungle really come in 
92. Yeah. Okay. That's what yeah. I think. That's yeah. the big yeah. 91. 92. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It come in because we yeah. started hearing tunes like As We're Tune, Bible and this and that yeah, coming yeah, in yeah. and the bass lines and that. <clears throat> and it's funny because I always told it, and Doug knows, back then it, um, it was for about 1,500 people. Then my dad and he designed it. So one Friday night, he had knocked the wall down into the next warehouse, got that. And halfway through the night, he opened the curtain. Oh, yeah, and that's everyone right. Everyone ran yeah, through. Yeah. Kenny, yeah. listen, them, them days we had Kenny, Randall, everyone yeah, yeah, was everyone, yeah, right? Yeah. Everyone was playing there, you know? Yeah, oh, my yeah, gosh. Yeah. Wicked night. Yeah. He used to go until like eight in the morning sometimes. Ooh. The Rat Pack used to always finish the night off. Last mm. set was Rat Pack time. Yeah. And if he was in a good mood, like one of his many bottles of champagne in my mark <laughs> yeah. they'd carry on till 10 or something yeah, you know yeah. what I mean oh yeah, my wicked. days yeah. that sounds but like almost impossible nowadays it but does yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you ain't getting that can imagine that anymore <laughs> but to me that, that's we heard the change in the music and yeah. one of my favourite tracks in was an acid track called Jesus Loves Jesus Acid. Loves Jesus. Yeah. Every time yeah. I play that on the radio, I'll send yeah. it out yeah. to him. Let me tell you, that <laughs> the tune, ecstasy club. I didn't like yeah. that music. I just, and when you hear that on a big, big set back in the day, <laughs> and you could, I used to watch people, just watch them dance. It was great, you know yeah. what I mean? I love dancing. You know, that's younger. a real acid bleep, but it's a big punchy oh, bass on it, isn't it? No, it's a build up, the whole thing. Oh, it's yeah. like coming yeah. in slow. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so it's coming to get you. As I said, we started towards halfway through 91 um, mm. that's when we really heard the bass lines the drum patterns right. mm. uh, breaks and all that coming in not just ragga right because you know jungle's not just about because like, of ragga yeah. it's uh, hip hop samples right. rare right. grooves everything, everything like you know? Doc Scott was a big influence yeah hard as well hard, Doc Scott yeah. Simon yeah. Bassline Smith you know also yeah. with the labels you mentioned before Mark Kemet, man. Mark Kemet. Oh, yeah. Listen, that See, third tune party, there, that Noise one. Factory, that, yeah. them lot there. Yeah. For me, remember, they're my champions remember, of jungle. Do you remember Para? Yeah. Do you yeah, remember Para? Yeah. Prophecy. Yeah, yeah. Dance Prophecy. Master, yeah. Dance yeah, yeah, Master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them yeah. man did for me was the... Three Thieves and a Lion. Lenny D. Ice. That's, they yeah, was the yeah. man who... I'm who, hearing so many names like, and tunes and... Living, and yeah. What's it called? Living Dance. What's the... the, the Living Dream. Living Dream, that's it. Their label. That label there was one of my main labels back in the day. I remember the cartoon little label. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Kick Kick Man. People who are listening now, you need to get your Google up and just press pause every time you hear a name and then Google Trust me, forget about... Like the jungle you know, hits. over the years, you've heard like people like for me. Yeah, people say to me now. People ask me this question today: mm. What is jungle? Yeah, well, actually, and my thing is this: This was going to be a question of mine. Yeah. How would you describe jungle to someone who doesn't some people, know what it is? Some people try and split it like drum and bass. Yeah, jungle. For for me, for one, it's all house music. Okay, right, the whole thing. Yeah, that's yeah. the seed. Is, is house music mm -hmm. the whole thing, and then. For me, like Fabio put a thing. I've always said this all the way, all the way anyway. But Fabio put a tweet up a few weeks ago, saying if you if you listen to drum and bass, I saw this you're tweet. a junglist. I saw yeah. this tweet. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And That's I've, always, I've always said that drum and bass come out of jungle. I've always said that. Come Some people want to call it drum and bass mm. because it's more trendier. Mm. That's cool. But for me, it's all jungle. Mm. Even what they're playing today is mm. all jungle. Mm. Right. Mm. Right. How would you, Doug, if someone had never heard Jungle before and they ask you, what does Jungle sound like? What does it mean? How would you describe it to them? The million dollar question. Mm. Uh, jungle is a fast, it's a faster BPM than most music. So mm -hmm. that's where the energy comes from. Because now, I mean, they're making music now, 180 BPMs. Which yes. is, but it doesn't sound like that because the break mm. beat mm. breaks down the beat. So it doesn't mm. sound... 180 BPM. Yeah. If you played a 4 4 at 180 BPM, yeah, that'd be fast. Yeah, yeah but um, <laughs> yeah, but it, it um, how do you describe jungle music? Jungle music is an amalgamation of every sound you'd ever love in your life, yes. put over a fast break beat. That's why it means something to you yes. and to us as olders and to kids that are younger than all of us finding it now, yeah, because there's something for everyone. If you like hip hop, you'll find a little bit, if you like reggae, you'll find a little bit, if mm. you like the techie darker industrial sound you'll find a bit whatever you want and then if, if you, you like that music if you like originality you'll find that too yep there's no boundaries yeah there's no rules can we talk about the importance of pirate radio when we talk about jungle what role it's the most important thing ever i think there we go <laughs> no, I'm I'm at least I'm half, half, i believe that there's no, a no. reason why yeah. you know <laughs> pirate, radio, pirate radio station was very 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 instrumental in in forward in this music yeah because you know, you got guys. We 
we used to do our shows on whatever radio station he was on. We used to do our shows, and we'd done it because we wanted to spread the vibe of this music. Mm. You know what I mean? But you know what, Ken? The thing about this is what we've got to look at. What came before? Because black music, yeah, pirate radio station, yeah, was was black music. Was yeah, it's the only way black music yeah, got, got yeah, played. Would get yeah, played. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. now we call it urban. It's urban. just black yeah. music. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whether it's soul, um, hip hop, like LWR, reggae, yeah, all like them LWR. stations. And this is what I say a lot of the kids. They just don't know what they've got, man. Because mm. back in the day, they ain't got a clue. Basically, like you said, we used to have to listen to Tony Williams on a Sunday. Yeah. Rodigan on, Rodigan a Saturday, on a Saturday later. Saturday, yeah, yeah. Once a week, you got your music, what you yeah. loved, you right. lived for. Yeah. And the pirates then, all those, all those of us who appreciated black music and like Tamla Motown. Yeah. One of the biggest icons to me and promoters of black music was Tony Blackburn. Tony Blackburn. Yeah, Tony, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Tony Blackburn. Which the, yeah. people wouldn't Never see now. Never left the yeah. Tamla Motown, the soul, uh, yeah. and he knows tune. Yeah. Robbie Vincent. Yeah, Robbie Vincent. Greg Edwards, yeah, Greg Edwards like you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. And yep. back in the day, one yep. of the original pioneers was Emperor Roscoe. Yeah. I don't yep. know if you yep. remember Yeah, him. I know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. man had a serious yeah. influences yeah. on our music scene today. Because mm-hmm. mm. we wouldn't be here if it weren't for them pioneers who went out and did the thing and like, you know, you risk getting nicked. Mm. You risk getting locked up. You risk getting shot. Yeah, mm. it, 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 you yeah. Know it was, I mean? it was like, like Phil said, Phil's, like Phil said, it was instrumental in promoting black music yeah. before, mm. this, before this thing started. Yeah. Right? But then we took it to, we took that lesson from the Pirate Radio Station right. back then. Yeah, that's right. And started doing, like, promoting jungle, mm. hardcore, yeah. any music, like house music. We yeah. just started to push it. Mm. And then people was recording it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Mm. People was recording it on their cassette on tapes. On the tapes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then these cassette tapes will find themselves in, in America, in Australia, in, I don't know how they get in there, but they get in there. Mm. And then the next thing you know, I'm getting a booking for Australia. In 1993. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Thing, thing well, is, you, came with us, the same thing. Sorry, Doug. That's right, mate. People used to come to London. That's why Cool got so good in them, though, like, spread about. Because people used to come from Devon, yep. Bristol, yep. sit down in uh, uh, Camden Town or wherever locally, record them, mm-hmm. record our shows, and yeah. take them back up. Yeah, that's right. That's why we, yeah. Could, yeah. See, we I, went up Birmingham and we could jam a dance because yeah. They, yeah, they know all yeah. them DJs. I remember the first Jungle want, Fever in Birmingham. That was... Yeah. I wanted that to was, expand on that because when I was young, I never realised that we were so lucky because I'm... A, I'm like I know of the reggae pirates and all mm-hmm. of that, but my era is that kind of early nineties hardcore. Rave, rave. Uh, and pirate was everywhere. You had the Centre yeah, Force and yeah, Sunrises yeah. Well, had just be- finished, then you had Pulse, Fantasies. Weekend Rush, Call, cool, Fantasy, all them were just about to come. And I didn't realise how lucky we were because I just assumed like this is pre internet. Mm-hmm. I didn't know everyone around the country back then. I was a mm-hmm. kid, so mm-hmm. I just thought mm-hmm. everyone had pirate radio. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realise how lucky we were as as consumers and listeners, for one. But also the music itself, like you said a minute ago, the most important thing, pirate radio, for me, it is because my whole, for me personally, my whole thing is based around pirate radio, yeah. what I learned, what I, what I loved and all that. And it's, it's luckily given me a career. But I think it's so important because back then it's easy now to see it as what it is. You make a song, you try and get it playlisted here mm. and you go and talk mm. to this geezer and he'll try and get it on Radio 1. It's all rubbish now yeah. back then you made a tune you give it to your mate you took it to the yeah. radio played, played it, it and I listened to it and then I went and bought it damn boogie mm. times and, that's and that was a, and Capital Radio 1 Kiss even Kiss the dance music station for London didn't play our music mm. they might play the odd tune that's why Pirate Radio is so it's still important to this day it meant the yeah. world to my right. generation You what, what you because, did as pirates it really did because people can go on field station right who, who's just made a tune in his bedroom mm. Mm play that tune on the radio Instantly, yeah. and what's that tune because no one's heard it before mm. yeah. and if he's a good producer I'd like what's that tune where, where can we get it this yeah. this oh. does actually bring up another question because um you know every kind of in the uk anyone we consider a pioneer or a legend within uh, an iconic and pivotal scene in the uk comes from pirate radio right that's what Most we know yeah. that's what 100%. we know them all from 100%. and every story they recite i mean look at the building we're in now like yeah. the, the journey all comes from mm. pirate but at the same time i'm also hearing you all talk about the raves that you lot used to either put on or play at and mm. we're talking about 1500 2000 3000 capacity which then makes me want to ask you how easy or difficult was it to put on a jungle rave? Like, did it come with any kind of 
Assum- pre-assumptions from venue owners was there and you know how we oh, know that, but- that was a sorry to cut you but no no go that really go hit a nail on the head with us because as jungle fever jungle fever was born out of call cool mm-hmm. because we wanted a a rave name not associated with the pirate radio right so something separate so we could do a rave in peace so jungle fever now for the early years of jungle came we was great everything was flying this and that mm. And then when it got to, when the, the change come with the garage coming in and people, it all sort of split up again. Yeah. Around 97 or 96 or so, 97 months ago, around them days, the clubs didn't want no jungle. No. Nah. They didn't mm. want the name jungle. So yeah. It was like had, a swear word. It was what, before then. It was listen, before then, Phil. Yeah, 95 yeah. months probably. Mm, yeah. From 95. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 95, sorry. That's And then the change, cut the break mm. come a bit later, yeah. Because I reckon, yeah. So 95-ish, I had to see that. And I'm a stubborn guy. And I don't, be, I, I, I can't beg anyone or whatever. <laughs> but it got to a reality where I had to drop Jungle. Right. And call it Fever. I remember. Mm. To, yeah. get a, to get a club, yeah. I used yeah. to, like, have to go in as Fever. And you right. could book the same club, you could go and yeah. talk to them, and they would let you do Fever with the same clientele line-up. And that all same line-up the minute you had jungle, jungle to the fly-up, you can't have it in the, right, in the club. And yeah. what and where did that come from? What was because look, we, I've obviously okay, trouble because yeah, I was going to say I know the narrative of grime, right? Going through a similar thing in, in London. Listen, we talk grime, everything they know about trouble. <laughs> trust me, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> daddies are that. They just took it to the next level. The they one, just went a bit more mental. With <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The saying that I mean, the one time because we're from East London set up mm. or whatever, and I know people all across the, the London or whatever. I've got respect for everyone, of course. My partner at the time, Richard, from Raindance, he was partners with Jungle Fever early days. Uh, we done one and two, jammed them down at Curtain Road. Lovely dance, wicked. He goes, right, I've got Linford Studio. I, I said, no. Uh-huh. He said, what? I, I said, I'm not going south. Right? This is just yeah, me. Yeah. Ken, because you know, I respected yeah. South to do their yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 I didn't yeah. want them thinking that East London's coming over, bigging it up, mm. doing that. I was, I'm very like that. And people yeah. were very territorial back then. Thank you. That's what yeah, I'm saying. It was different era. Yeah. So yeah. that was over. What's it called? Wands, Wandsworth. Yeah. Wandsworth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Linford Studio. Now Roast had done a few things there. Yeah. But Roast is from South. Yeah. And I. Like, but no, from, Roast started. Yeah. From North. Yeah, I know. But they was like the return mills. Yeah. Yeah. They took it out because what's yeah. his name used to own Roast? What's his name again? Paul, Paul Roast. Paul, Paul Roast. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then later them, on, and yeah. then came in later. You know what I mean? But so I was like saying to him, "No, nah, not doing it." And then yeah, he got me to do it. So we we went Linford Studio. <laughs> I know what's coming. Right now, the security there was there, and I was outside. I had the dog. I had my Rottweiler outside with my my mate Ivan from Birmingham who did security. We was out there. And I went, Ivan, I'm just going to do something. And um, Ivan had the dog. Oh, I remember that. I by the ice cream van. I remember that. Anyhow, two dudes, what happened now? Three guys come to the door. They wanted to get in. The security disrespected them 100%. What you shouldn't do. Come on, man, there's ways yeah, of doing yeah, yeah. Mm. Maybe yeah. not tonight, but they was being funny. I think they knew of them, and they was just disrespected them right. Mm. And I come out just as that, and I see the brother, the three guys look at the security and go, okay. Oh no. We we'll see you. Oh. Yeah. So they went away. I went inside. I thought, you know what, I better tighten up things and that. And two twos, I heard gunshot. And like, they shot at my dog. And in the ice cream bag where my dog was standing, I put him against the where the thing, it was like two inches above my dog's back, the gunshot. I retired him after that. I don't yeah. mind me being shot, not my dog. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. But. My missus, Susie, she's outside there. She was in the, the foyer taking tickets and that. A bullet whizzed past her face. No. Yeah, she felt the bullet whiz past her face and it ricocheted around the foyer. My dad, now, the security on the night, Scorpion security ran away. They, we, we found them all in, in up the end, all putting their jackets inside that, whatever. And I said, what are you doing? They're like, no, it's too dangerous. I said, your security yeah. and you caused this yeah yeah yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so by the will of god i had nobby from gloucester my mate bowler yeah, I remember nobby bowler, yeah, yeah, I bowler them. I them. Yeah, ivan yeah, 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 my yeah, dad yeah, big yeah. up all of these guys my yeah. dad these are me, real people as well real. six of us had to stand up and hold that dance the police yeah. come 
I said, right, we're looking. We're not going to stop it because you got X amount of people in there. We don't mm. know all rush. Mm. No more in. Mm. They blocked the roads yeah, off yeah. each end. Yeah. Only a DJ. I don't even think they let DJs in because Brocky done about a four hour set. <laughs> yeah. He was up there. I like, think I think I, I think I was one of the ones who didn't get in, Phil. Yeah, most of them didn't let you in. Yeah, Ken, I you know think I was one because I couldn't, couldn't get near yeah. it. My I said, you don't let Kenny in. I ain't got his money. <laughs> <laughs> Bro- Brocky will play for free for yeah. four hours. Easy, Bro- mate. Brocky's been mate. It is. But, I've heard but that, that was one of the this is the kind of story. thing yeah I've heard what about this got jungle a bad name yeah. and like would you know but Scr- sorry. sorry the thing about it is when that left us mm. it, you know there was little schisms in that after and bits and pieces but when all that finished we had so much to rebuild and get the trust yeah. of people yeah. and let them know mm. that you know Sue yeah. never come back to it <laughs> over 10 years My gosh, I had yeah. to tell Sue Susie it's not like that yeah, man changed. please I mean, yeah. she did it's, she had a crash helmet it was bad though <laughs> oh, she, I'd be traumatised <laughs> that, that, yeah. that, that thing well, what Phil was talking about that went on for for about a good two or three years didn't yeah. it yeah. you know what I mean and like it was happening not just in London it was happening all over the place like Manchester yeah, yeah, and yeah, mm. see I, I was going to say like the thing is like, obviously it's not the first scene with trouble but I think because rave came before that and it was all hands in the air yeah. ecstasy cuddles smiles yeah, yeah. when jungle come along the popularity of it and because it was an inner city was, sound yeah. 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 exactly the yeah. popular like any look jungle lent that crowd to gr- garage yeah. we then passed it over to gr- you know yeah. that's just the fashions of the time because mm. when you first get into a sound and no one cares about it you're there for the music mm-hmm. when it becomes popular you, you all the fashion followers yeah. they come and yeah. then that's when that's you get right. the aggro and yeah. that's when you get the green and it's yeah. funny because you can almost pinpoint jungle's troublesome years from kind of 94 yeah. to 90 Seven as the garage thing kicked in and then the the fashion went to garage and jungle become a beautiful scene drum and bass again but it was left with the stigma that still now I try and book clubs and I say yeah I've got this jungle no we don't want jungle in here mate I'm like it's the most peaceful scene Yeah. Yeah. yeah no we have ours and yeah, house yeah, is yeah. where the ag is now because that's where the fashion is yeah like, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah no but jungle you're gonna have all them trouble mate they're all yeah we're still we're still in. suffering to this day yeah man. people garage. are back into the music again but now, I think, not the fashion i think even even like when you look at covid right it's mm. like and it's like the government they don't get it's this dance music thing they don't care about it if there's one thing we've learned in the last year mm. and three months then that's definitely it mate, we learned care. that in the 80s and that's the mm. that, that, <laughs> yeah how the, gov- how the government is going on now with with towards towards the entertainment industry 100%. Right? that's what jungle was facing back then back then yeah. okay you know this I mean? is a really good comparison you you're know, you're yeah. making actually i want to hold uncle doug's the the garage point hold mm. that thought because i have a question about that especially regarding to cool fm but mm. now we're talking because i really want to touch on like certain topics before you know we run out of time talking about the dance can we talk about quote unquote the birth of the mc can we talk about when the mc uh, specifically in jungle all of a sudden made like a moment to the forefront certain names were getting bigger no, the, 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 the MC thing this always been there from the beginning right the MC because like, I remember my first I think there's a difference between a host and an MC though yeah yeah, yeah. that's the, first, the evolution isn't it the, yeah. the first MCs were just more hosting right mm. so you right. see someone who's keeping like the crowd entertained like, and kind of narrating like Chalky White and, and yeah. Yeah, Hardcore you know, General yeah, Hardcore General yeah, them yeah. Them man there, you know what I mean but uh, they used to do some lyrics as well though but okay Doug's is right. It was more of a hosting thing at the beginning, wow. and then then you had people like um, like Fearless, like uh, Stevie Hyper, GQ yeah. even GQ, yeah. GQ G was more of a host as well. He used to run a few lyrics, but mm. he was more hosty. But mm-hmm. he was good at what he done. G was the best. You know but, what I mean? Okay. And then you had Moose. Moose was another hoster. You know what I mean? And he, you know, but these guys stepped up their game when Stevie Hyper and them came in, and Skibbities and all that came in people like the old school lot like Moose and GQ they just stepped up their game and that's why they're still doing it to this day right. you know what I mean think, sorry, well, on, I'm going to lead it on to, to call oh, anyway because for me I mean I, I like I said I never had no sound system background in my life ever mm-hmm. and I went to a rave and saw Everson Rat Pack once singing over hardcore mm-hmm. yeah. a thing called Global Dance Ashford Sports Centre yeah. 1991 and it blew me away and he wasn't even like a, a jungle MC what was to come but he had lyrics he sung yeah, like, had lyrics. Uh, Searching yeah. for My Rizla before it was a song mm-hmm. over over whatever the ch- I was like flipping it and I was I was captured I've always been fascinated by the MCs always and then it wasn't till 
the Cool FM era mm-hmm. when I'd, I'd never known two MCs to pass a mic. Okay. And and, yeah, and that yeah. kind of thing. And yeah. when I first heard that, which would have been on Cool, because you've got to think, radio always breaks things first. Of course. Then the raves pick up, then the majors, mm. then it gets ruined, like then Remedy we go back to the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. But when I first heard Stingray and, and them kind of MCs yeah. on you, Freddie, Freddie Supreme, Supreme and them, and them and two of them together, music I love, going ba ba da ba ba da ba and then he'd go da 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 and he'd go ba ba da ba I couldn't believe it. It's like he's made this amazing amazing thing even better and I, yeah. I, for, yeah. I, get, I keep bigging up cool but for me they were the pioneers yeah, of definitely. MC culture hand to hand with the Ragged Twins oh, yeah, yeah, Navi and them guys 100% yeah. what, what I did the way I approached it um, with cool because I come from my background and I knew Ragged Twins I knew Navi I knew all them from Sound System days they was going to be a natural part of the evolution of it because with, with the rave when I come into doing the rave <coughs> Jungle Fever I looked at the raves and I wanted the raves to be like a yard dance, mm-hmm. like Skateland yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, with yeah, Jemmy, yeah, yeah. Gemini yeah. and having all the different MCs. So I thought, you know what, let me try. Let, I, I booked two MCs a set. Yeah. We had 12 MCs. When the days I come <laughs> wow. into it, they had two MCs, maybe yeah, three. No one done nothing like that before. And, the host really, of the, yeah. and I thought, you know yeah. what, let me do this. And that's what it, it caused. And then what we would do, <laughs> them days was so different. Kenny knows, yeah. Doug's knows. When a DJ come to your, your they stayed all night. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. Right? And they come before, yeah. they come an hour before, yeah, have a drink, have a smart, yeah. have a little rave. Not now just rushing in and playing the same tunes the last DJ paid. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. They used to come, have a rave and like... It was a night out for It was the a DJ, night out. Yeah. And what I used to do, all them MCs that were on it, like, you, you know, you'd have Kenny Ken, maybe Ragga Twins, maybe Brocky Det with Skiba, um and Shabba. Shabba you had all yeah. these along the way. But they'd all stayed all night. And at the end, the last set, yeah, that all of them on stage together. together. Yeah. Mate, yeah. And there was that's one why Jungle FM Fever was a bit different. I think it was the one, the fourth or fifth birthday at Str- Stratford, was it? Yeah. The end of the night, mate. You had the whole... Yeah, the mate, team up it, there. Mate, for a fan, it was all about 20 MCs just passing the mic down the line and then it'd go back. It was amazing. And that's what... Done. See, that's what we done on the radio as well, <laughs> was when we come through the hardcore... We started off hardcore. We was hardcore station progressed onto the jungle onto whatever and um by the time the jungle come, i said yeah we're gonna do it on radio as well yeah and then we come through and like it's even this makes me laugh because now it's completely different there's a million and one stations all on like all over the place everything so much competition and like i've had it on my station like a few years back people go oh a bit short of them season I said, no, no 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 listen we've been there we've done it we've mm-hmm. done that we created that Then we're doing it now. Leave them to do it. We're maturing. Yeah. Right. We have to move on, mm. Ken, and do yeah, things. We can't 100%. just be that cool affair who was there in mm. '94 and do exactly the same. Yeah, you got to move with the times, isn't you know. You? Well, well, you gave birth to what is now popular culture, Graham. All them you, you well, know, youngsters. Well, listen, Wiley. Yeah. Wiley's one of them. He come up to me in the fever that he goes, "You know, I always wanted to get on call. Uh, yeah, I never got on there." And we had like... Listen, when I got on call, Wiley texted me and said, you've done what we never achieved, Doug. Mm. That was what he said to me. I mean... Well, I want to talk about this comment, the the popular culture uh, and the grime, but also the garage and (laughs) everything. Okay. (laughs) uh, Literally everything that's been said in the last 10 minutes, I've got a question for you. So the moment where garage was kind of like becoming a thing and it was becoming more popular, not just in the dance, but also became commercially Mm -hmm. successful... Cool FM, however, didn't delve into that or go with, at that time, what maybe other people would say, why didn't you do it because it was so big? Tell me why Cool FM stayed, quote unquote, true, for wow. lack of a better description right now, to the sound it, it had birthed and it was known for and didn't go in down that garage route. Why? Was that a conscious decision? Was it? Why is 100%. that? I'm glad you can ask that question because that means a lot. You asking that. Because you know what we did, I we stuck like to, to our guns. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right, and that that pleases me because we got laughed at. It was a okay. hard time for you. Yeah. Listen, yeah. I'm a big promoter. I ain't gonna name no names. They come out said, "Boy, you lot are dead." One man stopped Brocky Nightingale back, and Brocky said, "You remember that it was a sunny day." Stopped him and goes, "Boy, so what are you gonna do now, Brox?" Gonna come and play some garage now. You know, jungle. No, nah, mate. Oh wow. You don't I, even, ask even, Rocky, you know. Even, even certain, even st- I'm not gonna mention no names, right? Yeah. But even certain jungle DJs was playing. Yes. Garage. 
and yes. they was getting run for it. You know, Listen, what I mean? we I'm, had I'm a... not going to mention no names because like, I, cause some yeah. of them are my cool friends. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. I'm not tell us no afterwards tell when the mic is <laughs> when the mic is off. We had a, a, a couple of DJs move on, a couple of MC. Listen, M, um, PSG. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was good on call, but he never quite clicked up to the no. heights of Ragga Twin, Skibber, and them man there. But he moved on to the garage, mm -hmm. and I. He smashed it, smashed and it, I was yeah. so glad for it. And leaving mm. us, he never, it wasn't a, a bad thing. He was like, I'm going to try this thing, and he moved on, and he done well. Yeah. So I would never hold a man back what he really feels. But that time there, I people say, oh, yeah. Even me, people said it to as well. Yeah. Rat leaving a, a sinking ship, like, called us a sinking ship, basically. Wow. And I yeah. thought, but the worst thing with me in the world is, you just made me step up my game 400 times. <laughs> But, but no, not only no. that. They, they, like Doug said, that they they took the when the garage scene started because it was more of a commercially kind of. It wasn't commercial, sound. but it was. You had more of the money. The, the badness went from the money. Bad, the badness well. went. The badness went from jungle to, to garage. The, yeah, 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 yeah. But can you I add I mean? as well? The change of the sound, because like you got to think, I wasn't one of the guys back then. I was a consumer buying music, playing on pirate radio. No one cared about me. I was just a nameless, faceless kid. Oh, Not we a kid. Did, we did, yeah. He's cared. Kenny never. Nearly. Don't spit out your drink now. <laughs> nearly. Um, no, and um, the, the thing that happened then was as well because the sound changed from let's call it from jungle to drum and bass to stop any. But yeah. as a, as a person that invested he, i used to go to work i was a plumber and i used to get my wages and buy records with my wages and i started going from buying maybe 10 records a week to eight to seven to five to two to, and i couldn't find music i like yeah, because yeah, the sound had changed so much from within that me as a junglist was now i couldn't buy by 97 i was struggling to find music that i liked okay. i'd my personal journey I started working for a garage label and I I hated it. Like I was I was a junglist through and but through. Kenny yeah. will and know more than anyone out of us at the time because this is certain producers did it with well, this it, is it, the thing everyone a lot of yeah. the jungle guys that never got through from the MCs like yeah. B Live, CKP, DT, all these big garage guys was ex jungle MCs. Producers that never really got much love. Mm. They went to garage and I from like I know this speaks for a lot of people. I started hearing more what I liked in Garage than what I was hearing in the music that I'd supported and loved so much, mm. Jungle Drum and Bass. Okay. It sounded so techy and hard mm. through that era that I did jump. I was one of them guys. I went and played Garage. I ended up on Rinse and done the, yeah. the Garage Grime and Dubstep well, stuff. But I hear... I hear, like, I'm so glad that he's stuck by his guns and whatever because we you needed mean, people yeah. like these and not like me, flaky. No, but you know <laughs> what, though? It feel, feels right. Yeah, yeah, a lot of us did stick to our guns, but in saying that, though, even I... And what you got to remember, 90, 96 was some top years for me. You know what I mean? Mm. Some like, was up there somewhere, you know what I mean? Mm. And um, even I got lost a bit because I didn't know, I was still getting work, but I didn't know what I wanted to play because like, yeah. There was no new stuff coming in. That's what I'm saying. It was you hard was a, for you to get tuned. It was all. Yeah. It was all. It yeah. was all. And you was, was the jungle sound clash yeah, channel, which yeah. we haven't mentioned yet. It but was you all, was the jungle guy. It was all so. tech. It was like Doug said. It was like a lot of techy. Like yeah. Like, they didn't um, try a bad company. They were doing it on purpose. Kind of, they were doing it on purpose. Yeah, they did. They did. They, it was done. They on wanted purpose. us gone. It was done on purpose. Yeah. But so I said, all right, then is this what you're playing? So what I what I started to do now, I started to pick stuff because I I love my jungle anyway, right? So I started to pick stuff out the techy stuff that I liked and was playing my sets that way. And then round about 99, 98, 99, that's when I, no, 98, I started my record label. Mm. And I said, man, I need to start getting Do some stuff that I wanna play, you know yeah. what I mean? And then we started to, like I got a few artists and we started to make jungle again. But other artists would make, what it was, other artists were making jungle still, but it was hard to get hold of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there wasn't a lot of it around. So man didn't wanna free up these tunes so no. quickly now. <laughs> Because like yeah. I'm a the lot of them were DJs as yeah. well. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They want to be. I'm the only one that's got this, so yeah. you ain't getting Kid this. Kid and unique. Yeah. I don't care if you're Kenny Ken. You're not getting this. Wow. You know what I mean? And like that's how it was. Right. But then, jungle started to come back in again, and it started to creep in slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly. And you know, just a quick. I remember like Kenny was. I with, told you you were going to remember loads of things. No, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're fever now. We was very. 
dub plate orientated like a, a sound clash dancing yes, yeah, yeah. and Kenny was one of the men who built one of the first like fever dub plates with yeah. every man oh. yeah, yeah, jungle yeah. fever I'll play yeah. this for you yeah, yeah. so like you know and all that was important yeah the dub plate culture is a big part of it yeah, yeah. Because the flipper, they, if someone like me didn't know about that culture, and hearing them tunes, like what you say, yeah. with his name in Mickey Finner DJ yeah. and all that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was the first time I'd heard yeah. dub plates yeah. with a man's name in it. Yeah. Now, Mickey Finn got it a bit wrong, his dub plate. <laughs> 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 I was going to say it then, but I'll get in trouble. Yeah, we won't, we won't say what it says before. But, uh, BC, yeah. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the dub, that's another thing. Yeah, the dub plate. I forgot about dub plate. Yeah, the yeah. dub plates was the big, big, yeah. big, Especially it for was my, for me coming through, mm, wicked. like I used to make sure I used to get loads of dub plates with my name in it. And we were so proud because Fever was like the, I think we was the first what a lot of DJs did that for. Yeah, and it was really nice. It was like you know what these guys are really f- feeding into yeah. it. Yeah. And that night on the night the people love it. it and Kenny being the champion, of course, <laughs> the, yeah. original, the original <laughs> champion from Roller Express. But you know what though? You know what though? When I won the Jungle uh, Sound Clash, yeah. right? I never played not one Kenny Ken dub plate, you know? No, you didn't. Oh, wow. You played a few Conganatis, though. Yeah. I've been after them what since. What it was, right, that certain <laughs> people, certain people like Brian G, Jumping Jack Frost, yeah. Conganati, and a few other people said to me, Ken, Randall said to me, Ken, you got to win this. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Here's the tunes, go and win it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what I done, right, I had a test drive at AWOL, because I used to do AWOL uh, every right, week, right? Okay. So I tested, I set out at AWOL. Yeah smashed it to pieces so Randall said to me and Goldie was going to me don't come back without the belt you know don't come back without the belt right no pressure yeah so I went to I went to Roller Express and when I went there rap DJ rap was bust when I tell you she was cleaning up right right, and I was scratching my head thinking Ross what am I going to do this girl she's smashing it right Mm. they had a a meter on the wall that that showed you how the clapometer yeah yeah right (laughs) And when they cheered for her, the whole thing just went red. And there was actually a clapper meter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Little, like, yeah. Listen, you can watch this on yeah. YouTube. The, the, the whole, Jungle the, Sound Clash. No, I was there. I, I can't even remember it. The whole, thing, the whole thing was red, right? Mm. So so rap was busting it up. Right? She was my main competition, rap, right? So when I went on there, my little brother, he's not even a junglist, but he was there supporting me, right? Mm-hmm. He come up to me and he said, Ken, don't even bother trying to mix, right? Fling just in, draw man. tune yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what he said no to me technical. He said to that's what it's about he it? said to yeah, me Ken really. it's a yeah. sound clash yeah. don't bother trying no mixing shit drop yeah, the yeah. bombs man just drop them tunes and went from my first tune even now my juggle my tune <laughs> my, I feel kind of you know what I mean <laughs> yeah, right? that first tune I played right on, in the final right that first tune I played was a tune what Rebel MC gave me right? Jano Dead Burning Spear that is the tune. That uh, tune there, right? Let me tell you something now. When I played that tune, I don't know how much times it got jacked up. It got yeah. jacked up a whole... Yeah. Didn't you had oh a different mix of Code Black as well. Yeah. Listen, you know I've dissected yeah, yeah, I know, that set. You know it, what it, I'm it, like. Some, some of the tunes didn't even get You're to the music part. You're a proper geek, ain't you, dog? <laughs> proper anorak. Some of the tunes didn't even get to the music part. You just, yeah. They just heard... People gone mad. <laughs> yeah. It, it Straight crazy, wheel up. Right? Next tune. But you know what? I'm cutting... That is jungle. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That is yeah. pure vibes. vibes. But you know what? Now I'm going to tell that you the dark jungle. side of that sound clash, right? Go on. They didn't want me to win it. Who's they? The people who was running it. They didn't want me to win it. They wanted rap Don't to look win at it. me. It weren't me, you know? <laughs> right? So I'm making sure none of your friends. <laughs> right, DJ Rap, right? She's a brilliant DJ, mm. right? They wanted her to win it. Right. Right. right? I don't know. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to bring the race game and the race card into it, but mm. they wanted her to win it, right? Because I was told this from good sources. But you I? just did. <laughs> right? yeah. Not going to bring the race card in, but basically they're racist. But, but that's what, but, but that, but that's, they just that's, wanted a white face yeah, to win that's, it. That's that's what it yeah. Basically, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. Right? They ended that's up doing nuts. it on wheel ups, wasn't it, in the end? And they the changed guy, the, yeah, the thing. They done it to wheel ups. Yeah, the guy, the guy, the one of the guys who, who ran it, right? I had to bully him to get my money. Oh. Right? Wow. We won't even go into that piece there, right? Mm. But the guy's gone to Australia now. He's living in Australia now. Okay, so Is that how you, much you scared him? No, not me. <laughs> so if you Other could trace people, back you know I mean? whoever used to run these raids and now lives in Australia, you know who we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like these, they, they, you know, it was, there was a lot of funny things going on in the background because the f- stories I heard after I won that sound clash, they, certain people didn't want me to win at all. Wow. So it, it definitely was... It was more than just the rave, wasn't it? It was really like part of what was going on. It was part of jungle. Listen, that competition. Because the since rave. then we've had awards and all that, and no yeah, one yeah, cares yeah. like who wins no what. But that there, it. that moment, prestigious, that mattered. And right. trust all, all, me. The, all the DJs that entered it, right? Who don't matter if you won or not. All the DJs that entered it, I take my hat off to them. Yeah, right? because yeah. what they saying, they they were saying that. 
they were saying that anyone who enters that competition and don't win it, right, career's their done. career's done. Yeah, right? that's it. Uh-huh. That's yeah. what they were saying, right? And they're all still here. And all the DJs yeah. that entered it are still here to this day. Yeah, of course. Mm. Love, I love of that. Course, right? I actually, oh, you know what? You mentioned uh, DJ Rap. I, I, can we talk about women in jungle? And, you know, I, I, over the last few years, there's been a lot of uh, talk, especially online and social media, that specifically when we talk about jungle slash drum and bass um, lineups or festivals or raves, that there is underrepresentation of women. Or, or talking about the times you've come from and the scene was growing. Who were some key players? And I'm not just talking on the decks. It could be uh, organizers, promoters within radio. Who are for some... me the best? For me, Jungle coming through the best girl DJs for me was Chemistry and Storm. Chemistry, like, oh, yeah. I can't have a conversation See, without those names. Right, they, 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 yeah, they was the Storm. Yeah. Storm played even the other day. I played with Storm at, mm-hmm. at Groove Riders thing at um, Rage at, um, in the West End. Right, he had his last Rage party. Right, and she was playing before me, DJ Storm. And she's playing vinyl. She went playing. No, mm. she's playing yeah, vinyl, yeah, yeah. right? And she smacked the ass out that place. Love you, that. you know, always, always love as well. Underrated and Tamsin. forgotten about Tamsin. Tamsin as well. Yeah, Tamsin. 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 She's she. In fact, I knew Tamsin before I knew Chemistry and Storm because yeah. she was the original roast yeah. DJ. Tamsin. Do you know, if you want to you know find I mean? someone who plays the real deal, even Proper still jungle. now, yeah, yeah, Tamsin yeah. is your Tamsin. girl. Yeah. Like yeah. rap become the most famous. Storm probably become the most respected. Yeah. yeah. Well, the way, listen. But for me, rap, Tamsin is the, yeah. she draws Musically. the proper, when Musically. I listen to her show, yeah. she knows her stuff and she yeah. don't play the top 10. She goes yeah. fully, fully yeah. in. Yeah. But there wasn't many girls, ladies, women, oh, oh, really oh, around I back don't then. Think, I don't think, I don't think, I had wild like, child. Yeah, wild child, yeah. Wild child, yeah but I don't days. think, I don't think girl DJ, DJs were, Attacking it enough, t- yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Like, like like the guys, you yeah. Know? yeah. They, right. were, they weren't attacking it like now. Yeah. They're attacking it. Yeah, well, this is. I'm glad you yeah. said that because, funnily enough, I was having a conversation with Genius just last week about Rinse and the station, and we were going through loads of like young DJs that were exciting, mm. both me and him. And funnily enough, we we looked at the 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 sets we were listening to in like SoundCloud pages, and we noticed that we found so many girls who are kind of blowing this fresh of breath of fresh air into jungle inspired sounds and th- and there's actually more almost more girls than guys kind of taking the original sound and making it something new mm. uh, how do you guys as pioneers how does that make you feel when you see all these young girls come up now what you what you got to remember as well right is that is that the reason why the girls weren't attacking it back then right is because mixing was an art right mm. mixing music was an art right and you you had to do it on vinyl, right? That was the art of DJing, right? And yeah. why were they not? Why would you say that women at that time because, weren't? Because they wasn't attacking it, because maybe they found um, uh, maybe they found it a bit difficult mm-hmm. to do. Do you think do the environment wasn't maybe comfortable enough for them to even attempt? Because if you come into a let's let I'm imagining Cool FM the station. Let's say I'll come in on a Thursday, even a Sunday night. I'm imagining it's packed to the rim with just dudes. No, but if you're if you're a girl DJ, right? I don't care what anyone says. If you're a girl DJ, even back then, right? If you and you're and you're chucking it down, yeah. you're gonna get in, right? Right? Mm. There just wasn't enough girls then. attacking it then, right? Right? I think just the. F- the uh, but, I on, honestly mate. believe talent's always recognised. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? Whether you're a man or woman, and you know what I mean. The funny yeah. thing is, at the moment, we're cool. <sighs> so many. Women DJs are trying to get on, all, yeah. more than ever. I've, but you know what? You know what? DJ, though, a you lot know of women. why? Why there's a lot of DJs, not just women, men as well, right? Mm. Why there's so many DJs coming through now mm-hmm. is because the mixing game has got so much yeah, easier. It's so easily yeah. really right. accessible. Yeah. Everything's right. It. With it's the so CDJs and that, yeah, it's so yeah. easy now. All right, that's why I was doing. I done a podcast the other day, right? And I was saying to them, all these young kids coming through, right? What you think? Do you think I'm going to bring vinyl to the dance? I'm bringing what they're bringing. I'm bringing my memory mm. stick. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, it's a level playing field. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, I'm not going to get try and play vinyl and maybe make a couple of slips. Yeah. And then this young 15-year-old kid comes Little on after me. The old <laughs> sync button. With his one memory uh, stick. Yeah. yeah. And puts it in. Yeah. And then... Blows, your blows me away. Yeah, 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 I'm not yeah, having yeah. that. Uh-uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming with my memory stick too. And I'm yeah. putting my, I'm, I ain't yeah. pressing no sync button, but I'm going to come with my yeah, memory. Yeah, yeah. Of course. And put that in and mix tight like them. Right. Do you know what, Jotty? Going you back to what, what you said, I do believe that probably, like, we see things as now, so there's loads of women that are doing their thing and that's great. Yeah. 
But you got to think, in the 80s and 90s, we were coming out of different sexist times, different times. Yeah, you know? exactly. So when, when you looked exactly. up at the stage that's or to a radio, it was all in, men. No, I'm, that's why I'm trying to put it but, into context for people who are listening. Because I can imagine, as a girl, look, yeah. I started learning how to DJ three, four years ago, right? Already in those times, I was on rinse already for a couple of years. I found it petrifying mm. to go on the decks with all these dudes around me that were knew what they were doing, quote unquote, that were known for what they were doing. And it made me feel scared to even ask a question. And I'm a confident, yeah. I'm but a Jotty, confident. You, know what, though, Jotty, you did it and you're here yeah, yeah, because if right. you've got the hunk, because it ain't no different for a man. When I went to my first pirate show, I made myself ill, mm. worrying, stressing, nervous. I swear, I mean, you might not think it now, but I did. No, no, so I it's the same, that. but I, I, I just think that uh, yeah, we're exactly. at a great place now where everyone can have a Course. go colour, creed, age, mm. height, f- weight none of it matters but what I don't agree with is it's gone you've gone from not having enough yeah. to now Overload. they're trying to push people into spaces that don't mm. fit just right. to make mm. it look good on yeah. a TV screen yeah. right. so yeah. right. everybody has to have this many women this many black people this mm. many yeah. Indians this yeah. many yeah. Chinese yeah. you yeah. have a tall yeah. person and a small person and a fat yeah. person to make everyone happy and mm. I think now the real talent isn't maybe coming through for the wrong reasons. Right. Because people are being pushed because it's politically correct yep. to have that you know face what? there. You, you saying that, right? That's one, what I think. One, Doug's is right because one day, I'm not gonna, again, I'm not going to mention his name. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> Tell us the name, King. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I played, once we stop recording, we're going to get those, all the names. Those, those who, um, like I played in Washington, uh, not Washington, um, uh, uh, what's it called? P, it begins with P. Poland. Pennsylvania? No. Um, Peckham? <laughs> where, where, what's his name comes Ponders from? Ponders End. Where did Kevin Hart come from? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Philly. Right? Philly. I I played, I, Kevin Hart. Yeah. <laughs> I played in Philly, right? I played in Philadelphia, right? Yeah. And the promoter, me and him, get on really well, right? And he booked me, mm-hmm. and he booked this other DJ, right? So I played my set. The room was nice. Everything was going good. Everything went well. Mm-hmm. Had a nice time. He the promoter's happy and everything. I'm happy. So this other DJ comes on after me. I'll go to the to, with the promoter to get my money. I come back. I was away for about ten minutes. Room's empty. Mm. This geezer's playing to an empty room, mm-hmm. right? And then the promoter said to me, "Ken, you know how much I played this motherfucker?" Oh, I said, "How much?" He said, "I'm not even going to tell you, Kenny, because you 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 punch me in my mouth." We can swear <laughs> right? on this one, by the way. Oh, can uh, we? Yeah. Fucking hell! Why didn't you say that? Right. So. The geezer was a big, and that's the same thing what you're saying. They they bought him in just to fit. Smoke and mirrors, of the, man. Because of this, the, the, the because, he, because he's made a big tune. Yeah, right? he's made a big tune and selling tickets he's, and he, so people want to hear hear him play. And like, as far as I'm concerned, he was he was rubbish. Mm. I'm not saying that producers can't mix because they can. There's some good producers. This DJs. is a very and interesting it, conversation it, it, I had thing very about that. recently. Sorry, Joey. No, no, the, go the ahead. The thing about that is, it's so right what you're saying because. They're not even bringing people. Mm. That person who they've put there to fit that thing. It's smoke and mirrors, mate. Ain't bringing, it, no ain't, ain't bringing no more. Ain't bringing no more crowd. Or, no ain't more, jamming no. them because no. you say, all right, put in one and see what you got. It's people like yourself and others who are filling the dance and they're, they're paying in three, four times as much mm. for what? And I think this is something that will actually, you know, regardless of scene or sound, this is like all across the board. Most definitely. And not just even in music. You see this in in all the arts, really. Yeah, 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 you're right. And it's a shame, but it's also something, Uh, it's good to be aware. I think if, you know, young people watching this, if there's anything to, you know, when you question yourself or you doubt yourself, whether you're actually good enough, you have to know that this is something that's been going on for decades and will never stop. And Mm. don't let that question your own talent like it's never going to be completely fair Mm. but you need to keep that in mind while you're doing what you love to do do you know know what I think years ago it was all about the music when we all first found it because we was all naive producers didn't know what they were doing DJs didn't know how to mix properly Mm. ravers were just following it and then it become professional when the things start making money well yeah but then there's that point in the middle when it was professional for the good reasons Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you start getting like now the agents and the managers and all these people sticking their oars in and their fingers in and now an artist now works for his agent instead Mm. of the agent working for his artist and then what they do is they build up acts that are not ready and they throw them in the public so all of a sudden one year you might have a new name after two years when they've rinsed every party you'll have a name that's on every festival flyer for the summer that come out of nowhere because they're on a certain agency Mm. and you can't book that one without booking that one and it's all bad because you know who gets 
it's the ravers that are getting mugged off because yep. they're paying yeah, good money yeah. for tickets and they're yeah. getting substandard exactly. acts because it. Sorry, I don't care. No, about it's people no, you're right. You're right. You're right. Because I'm sick of it. Because you know what? Because I'm a DJ's DJ. I DJ. I don't make tunes. I don't do it. I DJ. Yeah. And for years, I see these people come along and their faces seem to fit, and I watch them playing their crap. And and then now we're in a worse. Not so much now because of COVID, but up until COVID, and it will come back because all these big it's people at the top. It's already coming back. Have you seen the line? Yeah, they've sat around? out the way for yeah. eighteen months and said nothing because they don't want to rock no boats because they're all assholes. Mm. And then now it's come back again. Oh, look at us, everybody! We're yeah. at the top of these flies. We're doing it, and it's and not right. And what have they done? It's not yeah. right. For the yeah. community Nothing in, During lockdown It's sitting doors Counting their money When people have been yeah. streaming When people have been Putting out radio shows When people Mate. have been Promoting art It's doing what people yeah. love To keep the people together As you can tell I'm very passionate the, no. About no, it no, Because that's it right, Dougs. flipping right. Winds me no, up You're right Dougs that's what People get leapfrogged To the top yeah. Because they play the game yeah. You know what, It's about I've got, playing I've, the music I've, Not the game I've got on a certain agency Right And He said to me I went for a meeting With him right And he said to me Oh, don't worry, Ken. Yeah, we can get you on this. We can get you on that. We can get you on this. And I'm thinking to myself, hold on a minute. How are you going to get me on all these things? I never played. For and these I can't get before. myself on them for twenty years. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know? Yeah. So I'm thinking to myself. So anyway, I was with the guy, and then about three months later, I said to him, "Mate, I've got to leave mm. because you got for me. I'm old school." Mm. Get recognised on your talent and your merits. Right? Exactly. Get recognised on on what you bring to the table. Mm. Right. Mm. Don't get recognised mm. just because you're on some agency. Yeah. And you're not getting no work, but that agency's blackmailing the promoter, saying, "Right, you can't have Shy FX unless you have him." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You can't have Kenny Ken unless you have him. It's you know what I mean? You know the, the worst rubbish. thing. The rubbish. worst thing on the promoter side of that booking Jungle Fever. Doug's knows. Doug's worked alongside me with Fever, and it's like. I've got to a stage now where it's disheartening because certain DJs you mentioned, I can't even book again. They yeah. won't come and play for Fever yeah. or their agent puts a block in the way for yep. them not yep. to. Yeah. Yep. And you know what? We all come together, man. We all done this together. We, I know if I've got a booking for... I can phone Ken and Ken say, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm yeah, coming. Cool. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah, Four grand. He ain't going to use that excuse. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how <laughs> big my name is. I'm <laughs> coming. Yeah. The, the thing is... DJs use these agents as block. Mm. There's a three three DJs I've really fell out. Never again would book. Well, I couldn't book them anyhow. Mm. But I, I, if they want to talk to me, I turn my back. I don't even want to talk to you because they lie. Mm. Can't take a liar, man. Talk to my face. We yeah. we're grown men. If you can't do it, fair enough, brother. Mm. You don't feel to do yeah, it. Fair yeah. enough. We're cool. Yeah, just just but be don't just be put up front. blocks in the way, yeah, just man. Be up front, man. Don't hide behind figures. Just say, "Is I ain't really I gonna can't do, do fever no more." No, I ain't gonna do fever yeah, yeah, no yeah. more. Unfortunately, I'm safe yeah. with that, brother. There's some people. some some DJs think they're too big, too big to play for certain promoters, right? Mm. Like I went over the park the other day, and they had a set up in the park. Mm. Right, just just a just a not even decks, just what the controller, a controller, and a, yeah. yeah, yeah, just yeah. a controller, <laughs> some couple of speakers, and a, and a petrol generator, mm. right. And I was talking to the guy, and he said to me, Ken, would you play a set for it? I said, yeah, of course I would. Of course, yeah. Mm. You don't yeah. have to be some big time promoter for me to, you know. Because you love playing music. And what really yeah. hurts, I, I, I see, and you all know, I see promoters that are coming to this over the last five, ten years, and all the men are playing for them. Mm. I think, you know, it, it, it's gutting because we were foundation together mm. and you like know, it's funny because all know, you ever want for your music is a success and then when it gets and not only there, that the ravers now the people who are out there su supporting us all paying the bills keeping this right thing going they might say to me East why aren't you why can't you do, yeah and I'm they like, can't see who they want to see I, yeah. I, I just tell them can't get yeah. them I just say they them. won't play for us mate yeah. I want to I mean? um, I'm going to be sorry this is horrible that I have to do this but we are coming to an, uh, an end yeah. of oh, this conversation it? but Flyby. but I want to I can't leave this conversation and we're going to have to go through it quickly without I started mentioning samples at the start I dropped the sample thing because I, I love the culture of sampling and whatever like I love listening to a tune thinking wait uh, it sounds so familiar and um, can you maybe off the top of your head and it doesn't have to be your like your final answer but what was some Tunes that come to mind or some producers or artists who made a tune, flipped a sample that you think, oh, my God, that was br if you people at home need to research something right now or listen to a tune right now. Johnny, Johnny. The, the hardcore era was, for, I mean, if you're looking for silly samples, you can look at Trip to Trumpton and Sesame yeah, Street because yeah, yeah, that yeah, was when yeah, it went yeah. a bit 
too far. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, that was Steve Jackson what done that <laughs> Sesame Street tune, wasn't it? Yeah, that was. Um, no, that was. Um, what Did were they Steve called? Jackson do the one? Guy, though? No, he probably was in it, or he was the dude because he played it on his Kiss show. This is what Kiss played back then. But there's look, Aeson and people like that that were, yeah. do, were using mm. like um, samples that you would never dream of. Uh, look, there's even things like uh, there's no rules though. The is production there? house guys were master yeah. at using some crazy yeah. samples yeah. like. Um, uh, here comes the sun. Do, do, do. It was in a real hardcore, think, horrible think, hardcore, and then it just here comes the sun. Do, 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 do. And it worked. I, I don't think, know why, think, but it worked. I think the most iconic sample is We Are E. It's got to be. We Are E. Yeah, I guess. It's I don't know. Um, what was the um, Trace tune, London thing, um, the Babylon? What was it that, was, um, the, that was. That uh, was. Oh. I and I shall witness the day that Babylon yeah. splash recording. Oh yeah, that, yeah, splash. splash. Yeah, 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 that's, that. yeah. That's bad as well. For yeah, jungle, yeah, it yeah. just says, uh, and then I and I shall witness yeah. the day yeah. that Babylon shall fall. I always far. liked because the reggae samples always fitted in, but I liked mm. it when like Four Hero were good. Like when when we was making stuff as Manix the rear. They would use things like there was one EP they brought out called can't remember what it was called now. I won't even try and find it in my head, but um, they uh. This will be the day that I die. They just use yeah, that little yeah, bit, yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah, it's from yeah. American Pie yeah, in a, yeah. a oh, '92. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just that little. Yeah. This will be the yeah. day. It had a yeah. creaking door, yeah. Yeah. and then this will yeah. be the day. And I, I used to fascinate me that, like, what kind of drugs are you on? in the studio to think I know what will fit that yeah 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 Don McLean American Pie that's what we need do you know what I mean so um, the what baseline now is what Kenny mentioned earlier to me in a jungle tune nah prophecy man prophecy yeah prophecy when that prophecy original it shakes the building it shakes your soul that baseline of prophecy you know what Brian G Brian G said to me what tune really made you love jungle right and he put it a post up on Instagram, right? And that's mm. the tune I wrote, Prophecy. Oh, okay. Because yeah. of that bass line. You know, for me, it was Skin Teeth, uh, Third Party, uh, oh, Noise yeah, yeah, Factory. Yeah, you know, the first, factory, the yeah, first yeah, yeah, EP, yeah. the Black and White EP, I think it was. It was blue, What's the tune was for you, the Black and White. <laughs> if we, if we're going to throw that. Jungle wise. What is the tune that made you fall in love with Jungle? <sighs> I would say Prophecy. I just love Prophecy. Yeah. Because it's got yeah. such reggae vibes coming through. I mean, through. there was tunes before that. Well, yeah, I think we are here. I mean, that, the, that had the, a big so hand the in Mark it as Kemet, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Mark Kemet. Kemet's label, which, oh, what was it? The early, when we used to play at that call. Screwface. No, nah, man. It had Champion Screwface, of Champions. Champion of Champions. Before that. Summit of Jungle Oops. in it. It's singing. Jungle, I run it, I run it. No. <laughs> oh. he, had, he had a holy patrol. Man, there's loads. Man. You look at One of his early, early tunes were, got Kane on, and that was like spiritual mm. yeah. right? One of Mark, I'm one. trying to think what it is now oh, it's wicked, I'm rubbish I'm racking my brain though. for the early early really I would say if you wanted to know about the foundation of Jungle and what it sounds like go and look at the third party in Kemet Records mm. back catalogue mm. that will give you from hardcore to Jungle 91 to 94 yeah. and they done it mm. pucker you know they sampled stuff you wouldn't think of they got some of it right and some of it wrong but the stuff they got right mm. Mate, they were putting yeah, that, out four track. The Kemet tune to me is, is jungle. I can't think what that yeah, would be. Yeah, because you know what some kids said. Some kids said to me the other day, right? He said to me, "Yeah, Ken, yes, yeah, a Congo Nati, they're the kings of the jungle, right?" Uh-huh. And I said, "Mate, you need to go and do your homework." Oh, yeah. oh, here we, mm, yeah. here we go. Right, you need to go because they're part. Because for the yeah. youth, they are though, isn't it? Because yeah, Congo yeah, the yeah, big guy now, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, the Congo Nati is big, but they need to go and do their homework. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, Ken? The thing about it is society wants to put you in a box. Why has there got to be a king? Yeah. We're exactly. all kings. Yeah, yeah. And we're, all exactly. kings. Yeah, yeah, we're all queens. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well. We all work together, yeah. man. That yeah. is yeah. as well. And I mean, the scene couldn't, we couldn't have had this conversation if every single person that you guys have mentioned and many beyond didn't play a of pivotal course. part. Yeah. And Listen, a, Kenny's done amazing things for the scene. Every, Doug's yeah, exactly. has done in the later generation. Doug's has. I've done my thing for the scene. Mm. But we're only a, a part of it. A cog. Only a small part of it. Yeah, a cog. You know? I want to uh, unfortunately I have to wrap it up now Ooh. this is uh, this is it uh, what I've learned is uh, there's no coincidence that I was born when Jungle was born clearly those go uh, <laughs> hand in hand I know Doug wants me to say that it's, but been it's good that you th- like it though th- oh, yeah that's right I, I mean? I've got actually got a little idea but I won't say it on um on camera don't worry about it I'll, I'll run it past you later but you know 30 years of 
jungle 30 years of cool Doug's on me to say it's 30 years of Uncle Doug's as well but that's uh, <laughs> 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 oh, Joe, you let me down I could have got away with that I put my mic up unfortunately we have cameras in the building so that's yeah they're HD <laughs> and all these things aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to I want to first of all thank you all three of you for your time and for your anecdotes and for being honest and open and uh, even like genuinely I know when I get home tonight I'm going to go straight onto YouTube and I want to see some of the things that you guys talked about without telling a story so i mean short and snappy answer we've talked about the past 30 years who are you looking who excites you in music right now hit me with some names beat merchants okay. mosey you got, he looks bit. after I everyone you've got to some so you're gonna have to give him give Brocky. us a name in what? Don't in, say in, Rocky. <laughs> in jungle. Yeah. If yeah. I'm really not not in it. I don't know. Love that. Who's who? I just. We've so, had a whole conversation I mean, about jungle. No, but no. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I'm not into the brand new si- seeing the people and keeping up with. Things. I'm so busy and doing what East I'm doing. like an umbrella that keeps yeah. us all Back dry. Who's uh, someone you you? Who's someone who impressed you in the last few years? It doesn't have to be in jungle. Have you come across a DJ, an MC, and producer? You thought oh, this is. It this is something yeah, I, I, forgot, yeah. I can get behind. What about the chopstick guys? You love what they do? Because that's dub plate culture, isn't it? No, not really. <laughs> right. How about <laughs> we've, uh, we'll come to Eastman another time? Um, and <laughs> what he's trying to say is he loves everyone. It's going great. Everything excites him. Um, keep doing your thing. That's what he's really trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot. Listen, oh, especially with, listen, I get loads of demos, 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 this and that. And some if there's a little space i'll try and bring them through i always want new talent yeah mm. and we have to re- youngers are doing it mm. they we have to bring youngers through mm. and what we're doing Definitely. and we have to give them the time yeah. we have to support them definitely mm. but as far as picking names i mean well they're not youngers to me a very good their on call future thinking. Future thinking. Mm. And listen, they are young, underrated. but youngers doesn't and so, new the, and exciting is not age bound, right? New is just these have been overlooked. Yeah, exactly. It could because just be what someone. they're a trio, a singer, a MC hoster, and a DJ. Okay. DM Cut, Shiloh, and I one lady singer. Sick. So professional, Ken. Mm. So beautiful yeah. to watch and listen to and they make their own music. To me, they are future. Love that. Part of the future, definitely. I want to thank you, Eastman, Uncle Dougs. Yeah, congratulations also on turning 30 this year. Thank you for that. Can't wait to be invited to your birthday party. I'm glad you didn't forget it. Thank you. Absolutely (laughs) not. And the iconic Kenny Ken. I have been your host, Jyoti. I hope you uh, enjoyed this conversation here in the Rinse and Size Studios. Everything and all about Jungle. if you enjoy this conversation, definitely, like Kenny said, do your homework. I mean, it's not even homework. It'll be fun. Yeah. It's going to be fun digging back into this stuff and discovering and kind of understanding where this sound that we now all have been lucky enough to enjoy on the dance floor, through the airwaves and on telly even, where it comes from and how it started. And most importantly, the narratives of the people that made the sound what it is that we know today. Thank you, everyone. Joey, thank you for Boom. having us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Rinse and Size. Thanks yeah. very much. Yeah. Yes. Big up, Rinse. Big up.